Jeff Kahukauli. Respected Brother Abdurrahim Green, Brother Zakir Ahmed, Brother Ashraf Muhammadi, my respected elders, and my brothers and sisters. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be on all of you. The topic of this evening's talk is similarities between Hinduism and Islam. I started my talk by quoting a verse from the Glorious Quran, from Surah Ali Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, which says, Kul, Yahil al Kitab. Say, O oh people of the book, Ta'alo ila kalmitin sawa im baninabainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah, na'bda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. Wala nushrika bihi shayyam. That we associate no partners with him. Wala yatta khizabad dunabad dan arbaban minunillah. That we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. Fain tawallah. If then they turn back. Fakulu shadu, say ye be witness, bianna muslimoon, that we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Almighty God. This verse of the glorious Quran, though specifically it mentions Ahle Kitab, that the Jews and Christians, but in general it can be used for different types of people. According to me, this verse of the glorious Quran is the master key for conveying the message to different types of people. For coming on a common platform, Allah says, Ta'alaw ila kalmitin sawa im bainuna bainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'uda illallah. That we worship none but one Almighty God. Wala nushrika bhi shayyam. That we associate no partners with Him. In order to understand any religion, it is not appropriate to try and understand a religion by observing what the followers of that religion do. Because many a times, the followers themselves are not aware about their own religions and about the scriptures. Therefore, the best and the most appropriate method of understanding any religion is to try and understand the authentic sources, the authentic scriptures of that religion. If we have to understand Hinduism, we have to understand the authentic sources, the authentic sacred scriptures of Hinduism. And the most sacred scripture in Hinduism are the Vedas. The Vedas are followed by the Upanishads, by the Itihas, Ramayana, Bhagavad Bhagavad Gita, by the Puranas, Manusmiti, etc. So if we understand the Veda, and the other Hindu scriptures, we shall understand Hinduism in the correct perspective. If we have to understand Islam, we have to understand the sacred scriptures of Islam, that is, the glorious Quran, which is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And in order to understand the Quran, the supplementary source in Islam, is the Sunnah of the Prophet, the authentic ahadith, the authentic saying of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So if we have to understand Islam, we have to understand the glorious Quran and the authentic sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Before we discuss the similarities between Hinduism and Islam, let us understand the definition of Hinduism and Islam. The word Hindu, it has a geographical significance and refers to the people living beyond the river Sindhu or people living in the land watered by river Indus. And the historians, they say that this word Hindu was first used by the Persians who came into India through the northwestern passes of Himalaya. And historians also say that this word was used by the Arabs to describe the Indians. According to the Encyclopedia of Religion and Ethics, volume number six, reference number 699, 
it says that the word Hindu is nowhere mentioned in any of the Indian literature or Indian scriptures before the advent of Muslims to India. And according to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, he writes in his book, The Discovery of India, on page number 74 and 75, he says that the earliest occurrence of the word Hindu can be traced to a source eight centuries CE, that's a tantric of eight centuries CE. That means the first time the word Hindu was used is in the eight centuries CE in a tantric and it was used to describe a group of people. It was never used in relation to religion. The use of the word Hindu in relation to a religion is of late occurrence according to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. The word Hinduism is derived from the word Hindu and it was first used by the Englishmen, the Britishers, in the 19th century to describe the group of religious belief and practices of the people of India. According to New Encyclopedia Britannica, volume number 20, reference number 581, it says that this word Hinduism was first used by the British writers in the year 1830 to describe the religious beliefs of the people of India. So this word Hinduism is given by the Englishman. That's the reason the Hindu scholars, they say that Hinduism is a misnomer. The right word used should be the Sanatan Dharma. That means the eternal religion or it should be called as the Vedic Dharma. That is the religion of the Vedas. And according to Swami Vivekananda, who is a great scholar of Hinduism, he too says that the word Hinduism is a misnomer. The right word should be a Vedantist, the follower of Vedas. So in short, the word Hindu has a geographical significance. Its usage in relation to religion is of late occurrence. And the word Hinduism is coined by the Englishman, which is nowhere to be found in any of the Indian scriptures earlier. It came into existence only lately. The Hindu scholars say the right word should be Sanatan Dharam, Vedic Dharam, or Vedantist, but all of these words are not to be found in the Hindu scriptures. Let us understand the meaning of the word Islam. Islam comes from the Arabic word Salam, which means peace. It is also derived from Silm, which means to submit your will to Almighty God. So Islam in short means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God. And this word occurs in the glorious Quran and several authentic ahadith of the Prophet. It's mentioned in several places in the Quran, including Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19, and Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 85. The word Muslim means a person who submits his will to Almighty God. And this too occurs several times in the authentic hadith and several places in the glorious Quran, including Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 64. There's a misconception that Islam is a new religion which came into existence 1400 years back and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was the founder of this religion. In fact, Islam is there since time immemorial, since man set foot on the earth. And Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is not the founder of the religion of Islam but he is the last and final messenger of Almighty God. In this talk of mine, on similarities between Hinduism and Islam, I will not be speaking about those similarities which are known by almost all the followers of both the religions. For example, both the religions say that you should not steal, both the religions say that you should speak the truth, that you should not lie, both the religions say that you should be kind, that you should not be cruel. In fact, today I will be speaking about those similarities between